Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host, as always, is... Bonjour, I'm Namio. And this week we have a special guest with us. We have, from our own site, RT Gomer Productions, and also Namio's father, Irving. Hello there. So uh, before we get to the show, why don't you tell the folks at home a little bit about yourself, Irving? Well, I... Let me try that again. <laughs> He's a little stoned. Just a little yes. bit. Yes. He, 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 li- <laughs> he likes to smoke pot before he starts watching the show, so it's appropriate. Yes. <laughs> it makes there it so go. much more interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I review series video games, and I uh, have my own site, IrvingZoo.com. Namio is on there as well, and a fuck the book. <laughs> should, 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 we have, should we have tried to do this right now? I didn't realize how how high you are right now. I didn't oh, think wow. it was that high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anyway, let's, let's get to this week's drama. Drama. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, so let's see. Let's see. Where do, where should we start? Oh oh yeah, Luke. I'm still asking Luke what the fuck, like, man. And finally other people are asking Luke what the fuck. Because holy Especially shit. Especially when he goes around grabbing little girls' asses. Well, K- Kiki's twenty one, but still he's like in his seventies. Exactly. Yeah, he's Everybody's going full cool creeper mode. It's like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like and like he you know, he started off like, you know, because Kiki came um, to the quarter mains looking for Michael because she hadn't heard about AJ yet. And Luke, he like makes her a mimosa and then like sits down with her and grabs her knee. And as soon as he figures out that like she is not into that, he's like, oh, by the way, uh, AJ got shot. Michael's with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Dude, and she, then, what the hell? That's what she's. She's like, oh my god, why didn't you tell me that sooner? He's like, you didn't ask. <laughs> and, and it worked. <laughs> it totally deflected her from what he was doing. And then, yeah. Yeah, and then like later on, uh, yeah, she's, she's been with Michael with AJ's bedside, you know, just trying to be a supportive girlfriend, and he's like, he corners her and like gets her alone and like gives her a hug and then grabs her ass and she's like good freaking god what the hell and she doesn't it's like whoa and she doesn't feel like she can say anything because tracy and luke are engaged now and tracy is michael's family and that would be awkward and i'm sitting here going you know honey if it were me I would want to know if my fiance was grabbing other women's asses. Yeah, that would be a good idea. The only, the only thing I could see even justified in, in, in holding back is telling Michael right off. Yeah, because he is dealing with a lot. But that I can find justified. That's true, Morgan, right? however, is is not so so restrained because he saw it first hand. He saw first hand Luke coming onto her, and he's like, "What the fuck, dude?" You know, I, I started to hate Morgan a lot less this week, because, you know, oh, yeah. he, uh, he really, like, being with Ava really seems to have calmed him down, which is kind of hilarious, uh, but, you know, he's... Not to say peculiar. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, he saw what was happening to Kiki, and he just, you know, no resentment, uh, you know, none of his childish bullshit, he just is like, you know what? You know, I still care about what happens to you. I'm gonna stand up for you because clearly you're not in a position where you can stand up for yourself. Because you know, she's tiny and she's feeling awkward and she's not really part of the family. And so you know, and Morgan steps up, and it was really nice to see that. Yeah, threatening Luke and and got Luke to back down when he was when Morgan threatened to tell Tracy and Tracy walks in at just the right time. Of course, I call that GH timing. Because everybody, yes, everything happens at oh just the right convenient moment. Yeah. Yes. You, you can set your clock by it. <laughs> and some people do. <laughs> oh. 
And, and and then of course speaking of Tracy, she went to go see Kevin to talk about Luke. She was concerned. He went to go talk to Scott about what happened to Miss Cavage. Turns out that they dragged Luke away at one point while Scott was there. Scott had no idea what the hell they did to him. But there you have that. Yeah. And between the time Tracy saw Kevin in his office and ate some of his Chinese food that Lucy left behind because she had to go elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we know where she had to go. Yes. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but between that and the time that Tracy saw Kevin again, you know, she got Luke to apologize to Monica for blasting the hell out of her last week. And, yeah. and just, you know, Luke's starting to make a turn, except, of course, what she doesn't know is he's groping, you know, He's he's basically groping his nephew's girlfriend. Yeah, and or was it great? I think great nephew's girlfriend. Then you know, Luke is putting on one hell of an act, and I'm like, what? Like, yes, the, the something has happened in Miss Cabbage. Why? Why is he putting on that act? Like, what's like? And I'm I'm really interested to see what direction they take the story. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've seen some of the chatter around some people saying he was brainwashed, and if so, by who? Heather Weber, a Cassidyne? I, we don't know. Um, you know, it, it's obviously something happened to trigger him to be off character, out of character, if you will. If he was, cause... if he was brainwashed, you would think he would be doing something constructive. It could, it could just be, you know, one of those things biding his time. Yeah, because I think somebody. Somebody caught uh, one of the things he said was asking for the time or whatever. That could have been a clue. Hmm. I don't remember when he did that, uh, he but, was, but he somebody was, else caught yeah, it. Yeah, that was the weird thing. He was um, he was looking at watches online, and what he said was, I can't wait for somebody to ask me what time it is, because he was like looking at Rolexes or something. And then Tracy came in, and he played it off like he was going to buy it for her. Mm-hmm. Which for her, yeah, right. <laughs> Which begs the question, you know, like, is he like out for money again, or yeah, because like, because they they've made a point of, uh, you know, every time Luke brings up how angry he was that Monica would suggest that you know he was marrying Tracy for her money, uh, Tracy was like, you did twice, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> Yeah, but third time's a charm, and he may not be marrying her for her money this time. Or or he wouldn't if he was in his right mind, yeah. I don't think. Yeah, I didn't buy the apologies. They, no. They just, yeah, I mean, they sounded sincere, but everything else he's doing is like, okay, th- this guy's a hell of an actor. Yeah, he really mm-hmm. is. Oh, yeah. Both, both character and actor. Yeah. Shit, man. <laughs> oh, man. So... So while all that's going on, of course, AJ is, you know, in, in, in ICU and all of that. And he's Nate, I, I think, I don't remember if it was last week or the very beginning of this week, but he basically said, hey, you know what, Julian didn't shoot me. Yeah, he, yeah. he woke up just long enough for, for Michael to ask him, you know, did did Julian Jerome shoot you? And, and AJ said, no, which to me, I'm like, okay, in real life, which, you know, Port Charles in no way resembles uh, someone like waking up from a How coma. How dare you suggest that? <laughs> someone waking up from a coma <laughs> briefly and like barely answering one question would not be considered actual fucking evidence because no. like and Anna Anna was not even there. She just takes it like second or third hand that AJ said this, and she lets Julian go despite the fact that all of the evidence clearly points to him. I'm like, of course she does. Of course she does. Because who gives a shit what the evidence says? The guy <laughs> drugged up in a coma woke up for three seconds and said, no, it's not him. So obviously, let's let the mobster go. Yeah, granted, the guy drugged up from waking up from a coma is right, but they don't know that. Exa- they don't know that, like... And again, the evidence completely contradicts his story. So, mm-hmm. 
Because where but the evidence Michael, points. He said it too, and he wouldn't lie to Michael. No, oh, that's that's true. He would not ever lie to Michael, even from a. Coma. And I'm pretty sure he has. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh God, but yeah. So of course they let the they let Julian go even after even after he hires Rick on as his lawyer, and and Rick is badgering Anna about oh you know you know you keep him here against his you know you know legal stuff and threatening lawsuits and shit, yeah. and it was like. Dude, calm the fuck down. I mean, I know I know you're you're supposed to be protecting your client. That's fine, but Jeebus, man. <laughs> well, and you know, it's, it's kind of funny because Anna was kind of looking at him at first. It was like basically feeling like the fact that he hired Rick Lansing meant he was probably guilty. And I'm like, I don't know enough about this character, but <laughs> but again, you know, you know, one word from a guy. You know, barely out of a coma, and who is now unconscious again? Mm -hmm. Sort of, I guess. Like, I'm, I really don't know what's happening with AJ because uh, he and, becomes conscious when it's necessary to be. There you go. Um, yes, because Ava, after hearing that AJ's woken up and and let Julian off the hook, basically, she start she panics. She goes into the ho not hotel, but the hospital room. And gives this grand soliloquy, I want to say soliloquy, monologue, something. Oh my god, she, t she talked forever! <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you are there to fucking murder someone. <laughs> How long do you think you have before someone comes in? Obviously forever, because no one did come in while she was there. But I'm like, you know what? I, I... I would never try to murder someone because I'm pretty sure that I suck enough that I would get caught. Uh, also, I don't really have any de desire to murder anybody, but that's beside the point. But, uh, um, but you know, I would think that the most uh, efficient way to do that would be to fucking do it! It would! Like, and she tried. Like, you know, go after in there! Giving him, and, like... and the thing is, is like she, she tries to kill him by, you know, uh, shutting pinching, up, the pinching the tube for his ventilator. And I'm like, if you had just started doing that at the beginning of your fucking monologue, he would be dead by now. <laughs> yeah, you could monologue to him as he dies. Mm. You know? There you go. Mm. Two birds, one stone, there you go. Of course, you know once that of? started happening. Hmm? But, makes me think of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, really? If you're going to shoot, shoot. Don't talk. <laughs> there you go. But, of course, when she does it, AJ miraculously wakes up long enough to try and stop her and get the nurse's alarm going and, 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 and everything. And basically, Ava is foiled, although she gets away and is never caught, and AJ just goes back to the way he was. Yeah. It's and, I, and I'm still calling Ava. You are a goddamn... Okay, whoever's writing Ava, can you turn off God mode, please? <laughs> I swear, they have it for her, they have it for Sonny for the longest time, too, because, you know, most other criminals that come on the show, they are either dead or in prison by now. Sonny and the Jeromes are the only ones that have not been in prison mm. thus far. Mm. Although, to be fair, Julian has been presumed dead all these years. That's true. And Ava, well, she's been good enough not to get caught. Well, and Julian did technically get caught. Because that yeah. was what happened, was he cut that deal with the WSB. This is true. So. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. God. Yeah. So, and I, and I Franco. That I, I'm kind of glad that Sonny gets away with stuff. I like him. I like him some of the time, but in cases, especially when dealing with AJ, and he goes on and on and on about how horrible AJ is supposed to be, how how horrible of a father AJ is supposed to be. AJ may be an alcoholic, but you know what? Sonny is a mobster. Yeah. yeah. I would rather have an alcoholic than a mobster for a father at any time, because at least an alcoholic can be helped. An alcoholic can be put in a drunk tank for a while, and generally, if they're sober, if they stay on the wagon, they're generally harmless. But nope, Sonny, Sonny is convinced, he's been convinced ever since Michael was a baby, that he is 
Michael, he's a better father for Michael for whatever reason, even though he had to get custody of Michael by hanging AJ on a meat hook and beating the shit out of him. I did not know that. Was... Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that was long damn time ago. Yeah. Oh, and, and that's one of those things which I really hate about Sonny. Uh-huh. Uh, it's it's like he thinks he thinks okay this is the way it's got to be this is the way it's going to be done and if you don't like it then tough tough titties you know yeah uh, and of course hypocrisy thy name is sunny <laughs> uh, yeah and and it is true and alexis yes. oh god speaking of hypocrisy alexis, alexis is yeah like... still on the warpath about molly almost having sex and molly is still giving her the what the hell mm-hmm uh, and and of course she and Molly have it out. I, I think I think Alexis and Rick have it out. And... Yeah, and it's weird because basically, like, you know, Molly was gonna go go behind Alexis's back and move in with Rick, and Alexis basically just says no, 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 and they both go okay. And I'm like, well, yeah. that was anticlimactic. I'm mean, like, yeah. what? Like, what did you think she was gonna say? Did you think she was gonna say yes? Why do you need her permission? It was that one last no that did it. There you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but of course, and of the things that Molly throws in Alexis's face when Molly talks to Alexis about moving in with Rick, you know, who he's been associated with, and then it's like, Molly's like, Mom, you associate with Uncle Sonny? Yeah. You, you are on his retainer. You have no room to speak. And she's like, I only deal with the legitimate stuff. I'm like, no, you fucking don't. <laughs> no, you've gotten him out of prison for worse things than that plenty of times over the years. You had a kid with him, for, for crying out loud. Yeah, like, all three of her children have been fathered by criminals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have no room to be speaking. Oh, God. But that was different, somehow. Be- because, shut up, it exactly. was different. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, sure. I mean, and if it was if it was some, along the lines of, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did, I'm worried that you'll make the same mistakes I did, she handled it, you know, more more like an adult like she should, then, you know, I would be more on her side in this case. But you know, Alexis is just overreacting very, very a much. lot. And, of course, that leads to Molly... You know, just skipping out and running away. Yep. Uh, because that happens. That's what happens, you know? Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, where we last left them, I, th- I think they were just trying to find a place for Molly to go. I, I don't don't remember if they said where she's going or... I don't, I don't think that's been resolved yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll give get it over the next week. <laughs> yeah, your damn kids just kept coming back. Tell me about it. Especially that oldest <laughs> one. What the hell is her deal? I wish I knew I'd fix it. There you go. I've tried running away a few times, but I ended up having to come back. I, Twice. I know the feeling. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, oh, uh, uh, and speaking of children, oh, my God, the kids were adorable this week. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> oh my god, I fucking love Spencer. He's, yes! He's so damn adorable. Yes. As, as you say, the character and the actor. And so, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that, that kid has got cute nailed down. Because, <laughs> you know, I think, I think the week starts out with Spencer, you know, running into the, the living room at Windermere, uh, going, you guys, Ben is missing! <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're like, uh, Ben's with the nanny. We know exactly where he is. Calm the fuck down, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then he finds out that he, then he hasn't heard from Emma, and, oh, and yes. he goes over dramatic on she that. And my then... heart out! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I almost fell off my chair. He is, he, he, yes, oh my god, he is, he, he's gonna, I, I hope they keep him and they let him grow with the show, they don't age the character, be because nice. that kid needs to stay on the show. He does. They need to do with him what they did with Kimberly McCulloch, let her grow up with the show, let him grow up with the show here. Yes. Let him do it. 
please. Uh, and, and <laughs> as long as it's okay with him. Yeah. And speaking of Kimberly McCullough, oh my god, everybody misses Robin. And, like, poor little Emma. And, like, uh, you know, a- Emma Emma had a hard week. Uh, yeah. Cause... And it's one of those points where I had to say, what the hell, Patrick? Because he and Anna, the, he, Anna, and Emma were having breakfast together, and, and Patrick's a little snappy and all of that. And Emma brings out the Fabergé egg that Cameron, no, not Cameron, but Spencer, Spencer gave her that he got from Victor and Patrick overreacts a bit and just takes it away from her and tosses it and breaks it right there in the middle of Kelly's. Yes, and I don't know if you saw, but like, okay, it's a fucking Fabergé egg. Like, even in pieces, that thing is worth a fortune. And some random no-name background character swept it up and threw it away. Well, we know they swept it up. We don't know if they threw it away. Well, I'm assuming they threw it away. (laughs) But, uh... Oh. Well, how often do you see a Fabergé egg? Uh, you know, only as as a plot line and, and silly things. Yeah. And even Patrick was like, I'll get you another one, I'll get you another one. I'm, it's like, dude, uh, I know you want to do well by your daughter, you have but... have any idea uh, what that was? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... Yeah. And, like, and the, thing, the thing about that was, the reason that Patrick lost his shit was because Spencer got the egg from Victor. And he has come to a place where he's blaming, like, he's really devastated that Robin is gone, and he, you know, he's convinced that what his family really needs is for Robin to come home. And he's blaming Victor for her not being there. And I'm like, were you paying attention at all? This, yeah, you know what? This is not Victor's fault. This is Robin's fault for choosing Jason over her family. Indeed. I mean, Victor, yeah, he coerced her into it, sure. You know, he he had the leverage, but he still left the choice with Robin. He wasn't yeah. going to say, you have to do this or you will die. No, he said, you, have, you, you do this or Jason will die. He will surely die. <laughs> but, hey, you know, that that's happened. And in the end, it really was her choice. Yes. And that's what she made. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have said since I started watching, Robin is a bitch. <laughs> oh, uh, I can hear the Robin fans now. Yeah, oh dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't put her overall as a bitch. Um, I know obviously she has her moments, and sure, everybody does. I, I'm, I'm still of the mindset that yeah, it was a tough decision to make, and yes, it does suck for her family. But at the same time, I also see it as setting an example for Emma as well. Because if your friend is in danger and you, you have a chance to save a friend, especially somebody who has been such a big part of of your life, like Jason has to Robin, to just leave them and die, you know, that that's kind of not cool. At least I don't think. Yeah, the family is devastated. You know, you have to leave them behind for a while. But your family will still be there. They will be there when you get back, and they know you'll still be alive. You know, you, you don't know if your friend's going to make it without you, because he's kind of frozen and in, in, on the brink of death. So that that's where I get into it. That's I think this is that's, that's where one of those things where it's like Namio and I tend to agree <laughs> to disagree on, because yeah, because <laughs> it's like because it's like I I see the positive, she sees the negative. Well. We focus on the yeah. positive or negative, respectively, uh, of course. But uh, uh, I am a cynical old hag. I I, I, <laughs> I recognize this, and so am I. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, so we go from go from uh, Patrick and Emma, and and to Patrick's credit, as soon as he realized, oh shit, I fucked up, he immediately went right. to went to Emma and was like, oh, I am so yeah, sorry, and he. He he really did, you know. He he did adequately apologize, and then like Emma, smart little kid, she's like, yeah, "That wasn't good enough. You're gonna have to make it up to me better. How about a puppy?" Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she, that was it's like, wonderful. And she, you know, does does the little kid line of, "I'll feed it and walk it and take care of it," which every parent knows is complete horseshit. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, and uh, <laughs> rabbits. <laughs> I took care of those rabbits. Shut up. Um. Anyway. Um. 
And then, uh, and then Spencer walks in, and oh my god, Spencer, again, so cute, because, you know, when he was over at, uh, at Windermere, and he was lamenting that, you know, Emma had called him, uh, Nicholas was like, uh, you know Emma's going through some shit right now, right? I mean, her mom just left, uh, she's probably not in a place where she's, you know, really thinking about romance right now, and Spencer's like, what, what, what? And, uh... He's like, we have to go find her right now. <laughs> and Nicholas, what about schoolwork? No, we don't need to worry about schoolwork. Yes. And, and, and uh, yeah, and uh, yes, it, it, Nicholas tries to t be like, you have to go to school. And Spencer's like, Dad, she's a damsel in distress. School can wait. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, when... somebody, if somebody isn't already doing so, they need to get like little that clips of Spencer and his stuff, and that would just just put him up on YouTube. That that is hilarious. He is he he steals the scene a lot he really of times. Does. And uh, and you know once he gets to Emma, he's like, uh, you know, hello, my lady, and uh, you know, I am sorry to hear that you're having such a difficult time. Could I invite you to my own private island and <laughs> to, to help make you feel better? I like, think that's another thing that I love about him is he always refers to everything at Windermere as his. Yes. It's not his... Which he's... <laughs> yeah. he's, he's technically... Maybe, but it's technically his father's is just yeah. going to be passed to him. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it, it's, it's like me. I know the house I'm staying in, the stuff we have, you know, the property we own here in Graceville, it will eventually be passed to me. <laughs> it's the same difference. So if I say mine or whatever, it's not too far off, but it's not technically correct yes. either. Well, he's, yeah, he, it's just, it's the way that he lords it over everyone, like, oh, I am this rich, refined gentleman, and I'm like, you're a kid, but you're so cute. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, and and going on from there, we have Brit and oh my god, Obrecht has a heart. I know, like, how did that and, happen? And I don't know, but it's like she and Brit had a little bonding moment, and it was so adorable, and it was so great. It was like, oh, yeah. That scene ended, and I said, "Who are you, and what have you done with Obrecht?" Yes, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Although you know, hey, even 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 villains need need a little bit of that every now and then. Make them not so one note. Make them, you know, make them a little more dynamic and realize, yeah, these these are humans. Yeah, she's done some despicable things in her life, and she's a, you know, a hard ass bitch. But you know, she's still human. She still needs that familial love and affection. Well, and I think Brick found a trigger point for her too. Mm -hmm. In talking about the happiness you never had, please let me have it. You know, don't take it out on me basically yeah don't take your yeah. happiness out on me yeah and yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it's kind of funny because you know it, you can see Brit like she she's trying so hard to just find that butter zone where she doesn't have to feel guilty about Ben and she can still keep Nicholas and you know she can kind of uh, you know walk this tightrope with uh, all the lies that she's told and one of the things that I think is interesting is uh, how she, um, uh, you know, Lulu, Lulu had a dream at the beginning of the week that, you know, she was really Ben's mother. And, uh, and because, of course, we can't, you know, not foreshadow. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> we can't we can't not do that. Um, and, you know, she came over because she really wanted to visit Ben and you know he was with the nanny and you know Brit overheard Lulu telling Nicholas about her dream and um, you know before she left you know Brit made sure that Lulu you know was feeling included she's like you know you can you can look in on Ben if you want really really going the extra mile to include mm -hmm. Dante and Lulu in Ben's life so that she can kind of take that high ground and not yeah. feel like she's stealing their child away, even though she totally fucking is. Yeah, that's one of those where it's like, it's getting to be really, really mucky. Yeah. Yeah. Because if, if, if Brit hadn't had the character development, and if she hadn't 
started redeeming herself as a character, then it would be easy to say, yeah, you know, let, let, let Dante and Lulu find out. Let them rip Ben away from her. But at this point, now we've, we're so invested in Brit and her feelings that she's coming around. She's finding happiness. You know, we, we, we want I, I personally would want to find a middle ground. Yeah, the, the, it's probably going to come out at the engagement party. I'm, I'm willing to bet. I am calling it now. That's and I hope that at the end that everybody, you know, that, that Brit and Nicholas, yeah, they'll hit a snag a little bit. They'll probably fight a bit, probably have some time apart, but then eventually, you know, you know, get back together and, and go on their merry way. And also that Lulu and Dante and, and, and Brit and Nicholas, they all, you know, can just kind of share the custody with Ben and, and Ben would still be a good part of everybody's lives. That's going to be interesting because, you know, I've been kind of wondering if they are go they were going to um, do that reveal or if they're if they're going to draw it out, um, and it'll be it'll be interesting to see where that goes. It's going to be very interesting to see how Dante and Lulu do react because of course I mean it's of course it's going to come out eventually, but you know <laughs> it will be interesting to see if they are willing to do to Brit what Maxie did to them, which is to take you know, a child um, away from someone who has grown attached to it because it is not biologically theirs. You know, yeah. it's, it's going to yeah. be really interesting to see be, to, to see them, uh, you know, face that from the other side and see what they do. And it's, and it's going to be really interesting <laughs> if Maxie is back when that happens. Cool. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh god! Because you know, <laughs> we were we were talking. Uh, there was a an article on one of the soap sites that was saying that Kristen Storms is coming back. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. she's she's almost done with her maternity leave, um, and so <laughs> it's also going to be interesting to see if she hooks up with uh, Nathan because there was get, there there was some definite sparks between the two of them. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, speaking of Nathan. Yeah, speaking of Nathan, I, I thought it was so funny because Sam came to see Nathan at the beginning of the week and, uh, like, he answered the door shirtless again and she's like, do you ever wear a shirt? <laughs> it's a Only legitimate... when I'm off camera. Yeah, it's a legitimate <laughs> fucking question because pretty much every time they have shown him in his apartment, he has been shirtless and mostly like doing stuff that would definitely give him the opportunity to flex. Um, like, <laughs> it's like, damn it, man. Fan service, Fan service there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and of course, he, you know, he, she's trying to get him to back off of Silas, go after Ava, and he's not really having much of it. And, uh, and she told him that 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 Silas's wife is missing. From that hospital, he showed practically no surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he showed almost which, no reaction at all. Yeah, which could be argued. You know, he's a cop. He, he he needs to be able to stay cool. That can be argued. Sure, whatever. But he wasn't on duty, and something like that. Even even the most hardened cops would register something at least for a split at the second. At least they blink. Yeah. Yeah, but he didn't even blink. Is just like, oh, huh, really? And she's like, wait a minute. I think you're in on this. Yeah. And there's more. There's more fuel to add to that fire because speaking of of uh, Silas's wife, mm -hmm. uh, I guess Sue comes to visit Silas. <laughs> yeah. Donna Mills has been touted as, as coming onto the show, and she makes her appearance as Silas's mother-in-law. Yes. Who, of course, is all blaming him <laughs> and calling him out for for supposedly poisoning his wife and killing Nakamura and everything else and. Of course, she's being a bitch about it, and apparently she's been the one stalking him. Oh, is which... that what they were the uh, Im implication was? Okay, that's my <laughs> assumption at the very least. Like, I, I haven't been able to figure out what the fuck is going on with the stalker cam because at least once mm. it was Ava. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. okay, why the stalker cam? And then yeah, like you said, then you know. I forget her character's name. Uh, oh, Madeline uh, comes in and is like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I kind of roll my eyes when they do the 
do the, the the stalker cam thing or the you know POV shot because I'm like I don't care. Just do the reveal. This doesn't this doesn't make me in suspense. It just makes me annoyed. Yeah, uh, uh, there are certain times where it's going to work. They they this the the writers still need to figure that out for this go around. And and of course one of the things that his mother in law Madeline. And wanted to do was have him sign some documents, basically signing away all rights to her money in the event of her death, that sort of thing. And he's like, you know, I'll sign, what, sign whatever the hell you want me to, but uh, where is she? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not going to sign until you tell me. And, like, my thing is, okay, Silas, what you do is you counter, say, okay, you know what? I'm going to have my lawyer draft up an agreement <laughs> that says I will give up all rights to Nina's money if I am allowed access to her and the ability to visit her. Sign yeah. that, and they have no choice, but Silas isn't that smart. He wants to, like, hold that as a chip over her head. And uh, and then and I'm like, what the hell is this lady's problem anyway? Because, like, maybe when, before um, Silas went to medical school, I could understand her being like, this guy's not good enough for my daughter. But... Silas, like, she's still giving him that stink eye, and I'm like, he's a pediatric oncologist, one of the mm -hmm. best in the country, he runs the whole freaking department, he was on the short list to be chief of staff, I mean, it's not like he's nobody, Yeah, it's not like he has and it's no not like he needs her money anyway. <laughs> And so I'm like, what yeah. the hell is up this lady's butt? I don't even know. The only thing, I, the only thing I can figure why he didn't come back with that counter offer is because he knew there's got to be some reason why she would never go for it. Eh, because go. it's clear she's yeah. doing something, too. And, you know, wonder of wonders, at the end of the week, you know, Madeline shows up at Nathan's door and they clearly know each other. And you know, yep. big shock. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much since Nathan came in, uh, you know, Everyone's been speculating that he is some relation of Nina's, uh, you know, a brother or a son or, you know, so, some sort of relation. And, you know, that would that would make sense. It's going to be it, it, we'll see what it is. And uh, clearly ne we are eventually going to see Nina because mm -hmm. an actress was just cast to play her part. Oh yeah, so this yeah I I kind of would have figured that out anyway That's even true. before you're reading about the casting. So it's like we're gonna see her eventually. Yeah. Uh, oh oh oh. And and to to Silas's credit, when when last time we saw him with the documents, he was looking over them. So to give him credit for that, he obviously he's not gonna sign it very blindly. He he may have even looked over it. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, when he was there, and he, if he was actually going to sign, he'd be like, "Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll look over this, sign, sure." Yeah. And we don't know. He, there may be a plan for him later to have a lawyer draft up something else and say, "Here, boom, I'll relinquish money. You show me where she is, and then we'll call it even." That's true. Because I don't need your fucking money. I'm a god. I'm a goddamn great doctor. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a renowned doctor. I don't need your money. I'm sure he enjoyed I, throwing it at her and telling her she was tough out of luck. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a nice <laughs> roundabout way of saying shit out of luck. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and, of course, our our gay love triangle, Lucas, Brad, and Felix. <laughs> uh, of course, Brad and Felix. Felix, you know, he, he thinks that it's over, and I think it's Carly who talks him into, you know, going and giving him another shot. And he goes, and unfortunately, while they're doing that, Brad and, and and Lucas are talking, and Brad is totally convinced it's over. And, and as the two of them kiss, in walks Felix, because, yes. yes. you know, timing. Yes. It's timing. Uh, and, like, uh, yep. I'm sorry, like, I keep, I keep getting really annoyed with Felix, because, you know, he sits and he talks to Carly, and, you know, he keeps coming out and admitting, you know what, uh... You know, Brad and I were not exclusive. We hadn't talked about this. Blah, 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 blah. I really have no right to be like this. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on and keeps being like this. Yeah. And, it's like, eh. 
And um, although the, I thought the hilarious part was when he said the name Lucas and Carly was like, uh, by the way, that's my brother. Yeah, <laughs> and that was after she called him. What was it? Oh, what was it? That was, um, 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 oh, God, a whole something. Um, 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 oh, God. On a, not ho bag, not bro bag. Uh, it's goddamn. I, I don't remember it. Somebody tell me. Uh, somebody write in and either. tell me. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so, and, uh, you know, Luke, you know, Carly, Carly is, you know, a little sh shocked, but then she's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, but, you know, and the, meanwhile, Brad and oh, Luke... Oh, Himbo. Himbo. That's, Himbo. that's the name. Himbo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and... I just figured that out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, just... you know, and Lucas and Brad are just talking, like, they're just having a friendly conversation and, uh, you know, Brad just tells Lucas about what happened. And, you know what? And the thing about Lucas this whole time is he has been so respectful of Brad's boundaries and so understanding about Brad's situation. I mean, he's just been so goddamn perfect. And, you know, and to his credit, Brad, you know, and, and he, you know, he said, you know, Felix, you know, if, if he, you and he are really over, you know what? We should see where this is going because we have a lot in common. I feel like we enjoy each other's company. You know, we could give this a shot. And, uh, you know, Brad, to his credit, he's like, you know what? I don't want you to feel like you're, you know, a silver medal. And, you know, I, I, I am kind of, you know, interested in seeing where this is going. And, you know, they share the little kiss and Felix comes in. <laughs> And he just, like, shits himself again. And I'm like, <clears throat> stop yeah. being like this. You told Brad it was over. You have no right to get your panties in a twist if you see him with someone else. If you want him, fucking tell him, stop being a bitch about it. Uh -huh. And accept that when you're not together or you're not exclusive, you don't have a right to demand things from him. No, just, just, no. <laughs> yeah. Although I will say, I saw Felix a little sad. It's like, aww. I, you know, it was sad that Felix was sad, but he was also being stupid, so that made it harder for me to feel sorry for him. Yeah, but that's I, I can see that. <laughs> Again, oh, meanwhile... I am a cynical old hag. Um, yes. yes, you are. Meanwhile... <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, at the Jerome's, uh, Ava's covering her ass, and, and Carlos is caught in the middle between her and, and uh, Julian. Yeah. Julian's wanting him to check on Ava. Ava's wanting to cover her ass from Julian is just, ugh. And it's, it's Poor pretty Carlos. clear where Carlos's you know, loyalties lie. He, he is not going to betray Ava. And, you know, Julian tried to, like, be a shit and, like, being like, you work for me. And not yeah. for my sister, and I'm like, yeah, but clearly he likes your sister more, and is more, you know, liable to be on her side. So you're shit out of luck. Watch your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. And poor Carlos. He works for you as long as it doesn't clash with what he's doing for Ava. You know, he's trying so hard to stay on Sabrina's good side, except yeah. that. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. She she put two and two together. She's like, wait, did you try and kill AJ? But or did you shoot AJ? Yeah. Technically, no. Yeah. But he did try to kill him. And uh, the, you know, she got lucky. Well, I should say Carlos got lucky that Sabrina yes, asked the question the way she did because mm -hmm. she asked, "Did you shoot AJ?" And no, he did not. But she didn't ask him, "Were you the one who broke into the quarter mains?" Because if she had asked him that, he wouldn't have been able to give her that soulful look with his big brown eyes and be like, I swear to you, I swear on your child, unborn child's soul, I did not shoot A.J. Quartermain. Yes. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And Nick and Rick. Rick and Nick. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, because, uh, you know... Nick and Elizabeth, or, you know, 
sitting and talking, and Elizabeth is like, I don't know if I want to come to your engagement party because I don't want to be there without a date, which I'm like, who fucking gives a shit? But that's just Apparently me. Apparently she does. You that's know. another opportunity which... for GH timing. There you go. <laughs> there you go, and in comes Rick, and, well, he ends up asking her to go. And she accepts with Nicholas's, I don't know if it's his blessing, but he's like, you know what, it's her decision. If she wants to go with you, she can go with you, uh, you know? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> and I don't really know um, Rick and Elizabeth's history. I know they were married, but that's all I know. Yeah. Um, I'd have to I'd have to look into it a little bit more. That was during a time where I wasn't watching too awful much. Um, I know Rick had been on well, right before I stopped watching for a while, mm-hmm. and then I heard, of course, they got married, you know, had their thing and and, and everything. So yeah, what's but to see the two of them go at it, I'm sorry. What's his deal? What? Um, Who Rick. Is he? he used to be he used to be the DA, very corrupt. Um, you know, criminal ties, mob ties. He's Sonny's half brother, among other things. Um, I, th- I think Anna had went over it uh, quite well. Yeah, she when, did when the she, she did the exposition dump. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it was still kind of like, what is his deal? Like, what is he after? Because yeah. we still don't actually know for sure that he's the one backing the Jeromes. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they kept, uh, they, they, they want us to think that's who it is, but it could either turn out to be him or it could turn out not to be him, assuming that they've even decided if it's him or not. Yeah, watch it turn out to be, watch it turn out to be Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that would be awkward as hell. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Huh. Yeah. But we we had a little bit with Franco this week too, because yeah, he and <laughs> Scott they they almost had a bonding moment. Yes. And Franco <laughs> seemed really like you know yeah you know I'll help you how you help me I'll help you you know. Well, it's so, and it's, of course he realizes yeah he Scott and Lucy are a thing they're trying to be a thing. It's so funny like everybody has figured out that Scott and Lucy are totally a thing, except Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like Kevin, dude. You are an analyst. You are a psychologist. You are the head doctor. What the hell, man? Where's your head? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he, he's that just he's that deep into his work. Yeah. Uh, which happens. And I guess if you are that deep in your work, you will miss out on things. Even even the most even the most perceptive and intelligent of minds will miss out on that if they're too deep in their work. Which I, I guess is what this is trying to show here. And then they do a decent job. Yeah. I guess. So, you yeah, know. What, what it, was, it's not unlikely. What, what happened was, you know, Kevin, you know, invited Lucy over for lunch. And I put that in air quotes because what he really wanted was uh, to apparently lay out a whole bunch of Chinese food on the desk and then, like, fuck her in his office somewhere. Which I'm like, where mm-hmm. are you going to have sex? The, the only good place would be the um the you know the desk and you've covered it with chinese food but whatever that's your thing um maybe he's into something really <laughs> weird i don't know um, <laughs> but uh you know tracy comes in doing her thing about luke and you know lucy was lucy was freaking out anyway because you know she's lucy and also because like she didn't really want to have sex with him because she can't stop thinking about scott and uh, you know, she she runs off uh, when Tracy comes in and goes straight to Scott, and he's like, you know what, this we we aren't doing this. Uh, you're with him or you're with me. Fucking choose. Yeah. And she's like, I have to choose. And I'm like, what the fuck did you think was gonna happen? <laughs> like, did you? <laughs> and of course Kevin shows up. Yes. Big... <laughs> to, uh, to, in, in, in his quest to find out what hell what the hell happened to Miss Cabbage, he shows he shows up and Lucy's there like, oh yeah. But she says, Oh, I just came to check on Scott. Okay. Yeah. What happened to Miss Cabbage? <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't so far fetched because the two of them are supposed to be best friends. Yes. But you know, and, and Scott had been through a, a pretty bad experience, so you know, it's understandable. 
at least I would think so. Maybe maybe it's a little more naive. Maybe I would identify better with Kevin in that <laughs> sense. And, and who knows if, if if that kind of thing happens, I should probably start suspecting. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm not monogamous. At least I don't think I am at this point. And, that, well, <laughs> and even Tracy was like, oh, yeah, um, there's something going on with Lucy and Scott. And mm-hmm. Kevin was like, there totally isn't. You don't know her like I do. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and of course, going back to Anna, she did question Duke about his whereabouts and, and corroborating with Sonny's story. And, of course, Duke covered for Sonny because he's a dip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Sonny, you know, Sonny appreciated it, but he also appreciated what Duke put on the line. Yes. You know, that, and that's one thing that you've got to really love about Sonny is, you know what, he doesn't, uh, he, 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 he appreciates his people. He appreciates yeah. his family, and he doesn't ask sacrifices of them uh, lightly. You know, yeah. he you know, and he gave Duke the option. He's like, you know what? You don't have to do this. This would be really helpful if you did, but you know, if you don't want to put your relationship on the line for me, that is okay. And Duke, yeah. you know, Duke made the decision, and of course, Anna had to sit there. <clears throat> and uh, whine and moan for a while about, oh, can I really trust you uh, because you're working for Sonny uh, and therefore we're on opposite sides of the law and Duke's basically like, for the love of God, woman, we've had this conversation like 12 times, will you shut up already? <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, and, there, and the reason why Duke is working with Sonny, Sonny's working to take on Jerome. Jerome, mortal enemy of Duke Lavery and Anna Devane. That, that that seems like a good idea because Duke is not bound strictly bound to the law like Anna is yeah. and even then Anna sometimes bends the law a little bit Cesar Faison yeah. well, and the only <clears throat> reason Duke ultimately did that in the first place was because he heard Julian saying he was going to take out Anna yeah so it's like yeah basically um, yeah I, I protect the woman I love if it was me I'd probably do the same thing and, and he told yeah. Anna about that, and she's like, whatever, I can take care of myself. I'm like, no, you can't. You're one of the worst police officers I've ever seen. You, you've, you've been disarmed by people so many times. You have fucked up investigations so many times. You have been outclassed by the Jeromes, by the Faison. You know, the only time when you do anything right is when it's narratively convenient. You need Duke looking out for you because you suck. And yet, she is still with us. It is possible yep. she's too stupid to die. There's, there's, there's that. Uh. Yeah. Although I would argue, I bet you if she wasn't the commissioner, if she was like freelance or whatever, she would probably be more effective. That's, That's I'm true. I'm willing to bet. That's true, because she, she has to be part of the Port Charles Police Department, and it is usually narratively imperative that they suck. Mm-hmm. Oh, and oh wow, we're we're almost out of time. So a few a few quick things I did want to touch on. Uh, one of the bigger things, AJ before you know when he took over ELQ, he had to update all of his documents, and now Michael is his power of attorney. Yeah. yeah. So he has to make the decision that to either go in and take care of the the the, the aneurysm by surgery or by uh, less invasive methods. I think it was like Medi- medicine medication. or whatever. And um, medication. Like. Yeah. I'm like, what kind of aneurysm is this? Yeah. And, like, where did it come from? Because he was shot. Getting shot in the chest, as far as I know, does not cause a brain aneurysm. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was that was my nurse mother uh, laughing in the background there. Uh, yeah, she, she heard that and she couldn't help laughing. And, uh, and I'm like, so <laughs> this had to be there... Before, why did no one catch it? Why are they only just finding it now? Why did it only manifest itself when he got shot? Like, hmm. what is going on? Like, I don't yeah, understand. Now, if they had said he threw a clot, yeah, that would be believable. Yeah, and, and that and that's, caused a stroke. And that's the other thing. They kept going back and forth between saying he had a stroke and saying he had an aneurysm. Those are not the same thing. No. Like, no, I, 
I would be surprised. I mean, of course, obviously the writer, whoever wrote that particular pieces, those those particular pieces of dialogue, rather, don't have an idea what they're talking about. That or they do, and the characters don't, because obviously not every character is going to know the proper medical term for everything. That's true. And I think the, more of the characters that were calling it a stroke or whatever, I don't think – I think there were ones that didn't have the medical training. I think you're probably right. Uh, but still, so like, it could just be character based, the, the yeah. and yet it looks more like a stroke. And yet, yeah. okay, but in this this aneurysm, like, just kind of keeps him in a coma most of the time, except like he can wake up every now and then briefly. I'm like this. I don't know. So <laughs> we'll see. And you know, I thought it was kind of unfair for Monica to kind of just like step back and be like, Michael, it's your decision. It's like, you're a fucking doctor. At least tell him what you think he should do. But she, like, just yeah. kind of throws up her hands and is like, okay, you know, 20-something kid who barely knows your father and who's been through a whole lot of fucking shit lately, go ahead and make this life-altering decision that if you get it wrong, you're gonna feel guilty for the rest of your life. Just go ahead and do that. I will put my son's life in your hands, and, and let Michael's you. Michael standing here going, "Thanks for nothing, everybody." Yeah, and let you bear yeah. the, you know the weight of that kind of you know responsibility yeah. and guilt. That that seems like a good idea to me. <laughs> yeah, TV tropes put it best. Michael's life has been one break the cutie moment after another. <laughs> for whatever reason, the writers over the years they have loved to just make Michael the brunt of a lot of this stuff i mean i think he's been shot he's shot someone else he, he's killed somebody he's been raped now he's got this and it's just the the guy cannot catch a break his mother was kidnapped and now you know one of his father was shot by the other father uh mm -hmm. he had to watch not his, to mention he had to watch not to mention he's had at least one girlfriend die is just wow and then he uh, got to watch uh, his brother married a girl that he loved. Uh. <laughs> it's just, yeah, Michael, dude. They need to give him a break. Seriously. Just, just seriously a break. Oh, God. So that, that was that was the one th one of the things I wanted to definitely wanted to bring up. Um, one of the other ones, um, let's see. I don't know, let's see. We got that, 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 that. Uh, I'm still trying to... Oh, Yeah. Uh, towards the end of the week, Sean, who's been basically been yes manning for Sonny doing his stuff and you know having a bonding moment with Sonny, at the end of the week, one of his one of his waitresses says, "Yeah, you know, you know there was a, there was a woman here to see you," and he asked her who she was, and the waitress is like, "You don't pay me enough to give her the name." Yeah, it's like wow, rude. And then later, the waitress again is like, "You know that woman I told you about? Yeah, what about her? She's sitting right over there." And lo and behold, it, there's there's a woman there and. And they didn't say who she was yet. Obviously, she and Sean have a connection of some sort. Willing to bet it's TJ's mama. Oh, that's a possibility. Ooh. Like, I was just like, okay, random black lady. Am yeah. I supposed to know who this is? I had not thought of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am willing to bet it is, is TJ's mama. That would be really interesting, because TJ has said over and over again that his mother doesn't care about him. Yeah. Why is she there? We don't know yet. But we'll find out, <laughs> along with a lot of other things. Tune in tomorrow. Yes. Well, well, technically, you should have tuned in yesterday, because this is going up on Tuesday. Because I've got Thespian Talk going up on Mondays. We're time yes. travelers. Yes. Oh. So, anyway, with that, that is going to be the end of the show for this week. Um, I know we didn't cover every last thing like we normally do, but there was a bunch of stuff to cover, a bunch of things to talk about, and there were three of us this time, so a little bit more thoughts well, could more go like in and, and out. Half, flying but... every... <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. <laughs> oh! Boom! <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, so, Irving, it was very nice to have you on board this week. Thank you for having me. And if we want to find you on the social medias, where can we find you? Uh, I am on Facebook, un Irving's Zoo. And Whoop. my website is irvingzoo.com. I'm also on RT Goma. Woo! Of course, Yay. all the best people are. Indeed. Sweet. 
All right, so um, uh, Namio, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. Uh, you can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. And you can find me, uh, you can find me on Tumblr at uh, Namio's Corner. And you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Yes, I am, also on, I am also on Twitter. Yeah. I, oh. I forget about that. It's at Urban Zoo. Ah, there we go. Alrighty, and me, you can find me on rtgomer.com, nerdvice.com, on Twitter, Tumblr, you can find me at gomer21xx, you can also find Nerdvice and RT Gomer Productions on Facebook, and if you like the show and you want to toss money at me to help for, to help grab some equipment upgrades, site upgrades, etc., um, you can just go to patreon.com slash gomer21xx, money pledged will go towards the equipment upgrades, the website upgrades, and if you donate and pledge $20 or more per month, you get some advertising space, which I've looked around, it's a pretty good deal. Ooh, so, so there you have it, and thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next week, I hope. <laughs> so until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio and Irving signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.